welcome to Miniature Monday. And so this is just a three and a half by three and a half inch piece of watercolor paper I have taped down. I already put masking fluid on my three little trees. They're gonna be my fall trees. I have my paint ready. I am gonna first wet the background and get it nice and wet. And you see I also have a little horizon line and just a very light indication of some background trees back there. So then I'm going to take my cobalt blue and I'm just going to put it in that wet sky. I'm not covering the whole area because I want some fluffy little clouds in there. we got to have our fluffy little clouds. So I'm just going to keep adding that until I'm satisfied to get the sky in there. And that's, that's looking pretty good. And I'm just dropping that color in here and there making sure that I leave some with very little color to be my clouds. It just is a beautiful little fall sky. Now I decided to start doing these on Mondays just to give you something that you can practice on. There's no right or wrong way to do these so they're just miniature little paintings you can sort of do as a warm-up or something like that. Now I am taking that pyrrole green, as you can see, and I'm going across the back. That's going to be my farthest, the trees furthest from me. So I want them to be darker and I really don't care about any detail in them. I'm just sort of putting in a jiggity jaggedy line with them. Then I'm going to come back with my green gold. That's going to be my foreground trees. They're a little paler. And then I'm just going to bring that green on down into the the meadow there. We're doing a little fall meadow and this is some olive green. I'm just putting a little bit of olive green here and there. Letting it blend while it's still wet. We're just doing really wet on wet techniques here. Nothing fancy. We're just doing just doing it to get into our right creative brain, into the right brain that gets us into that creative mood. And I'm just adding a little bit of blue shadow down there. And now I'm going to come back with the pyro green because that has faded out and just add a little bit more there in the background. I'm just going to go along the base of the trees with a little bit of the pyro green just, just to give it a little bit of a shadow. We want our trees to have shadows, we want them to look realistic ish. I mean, this is more of an impressionistic type painting. Like I said, it's more of just an exercise to get your brain in that creative mood, get, get you in your creative brain. It's just a little exercise you can do in 10, 15 minutes. It's also something that will satisfy you if you don't have time to do a large scale painting. You can just do a little Monday miniature and get it off your chest. Just get some of that creativity out when you don't have time to do a lot. Now we've let it dry completely. This is, it's completely dry. And I'm gonna come back in here with some green and I'm just gonna to touch over that, those background trees just to give them some shadows and to break it up a little bit. And keep in mind that this is gonna dry a little bit lighter than it looks right now. So don't worry, it'll, it'll look fine when it's dry. It looks like a little bit of, kind of dotty. We got a little dotty painting, but it's okay. And I'm going to come in with some pyro green right there at the base and pull that down to create the shadows from that tree line. And I'm just doing it irregularly, bringing in a little more pyro green into that background near the bottoms, just to put in some shadows, give it a little tiny bit of dimension. Remember, we're not doing a lot of details, but we are getting in a little shadows. Just to kind of separate it also from those front row of trees. I'm just putting on a little tiny bit of pyrrole here and there into that pale green in the front. Just so that you can see that you can see through those trees. You can see that pyrrole green peeking through. Now I'm just going to take some clear water and go over the leaves of my three trees here. Just put down 
just clear water. Now I'm also making sure that I leave some spaces. I want some of that sky to peek through the leaves. I don't want it to be a big solid mass of tree. We want some of that sky to peek through. So I'm just taking some cadmium yellow and I'm just kind of splotching it on the paper randomly here and there. No rhyme or reason, just getting it down. Just making sure that I let some of that blue peek through so I'm not wetting the whole area. Also gonna add some of the cadmium to the background just to kind of keep it unified. You don't have to, that's optional. Now I'm taking a little bit of orange and I'm just at going right into that cadmium and letting those two blend on the paper. Nice wet in a wet technique. And I'm just doing it randomly. And that's gonna be our shadows. We gotta do our little shadow work. And I'm also taking some deep sort of alizarin crimson and putting that in there. And I'm also adding it to the background trees, just again, to keep it kind of unified. So that it's, um, it looks good. I mean, it, it matches. Because you know that there's probably some hardwood trees back there in that forest of evergreens. So we gotta get those in there. And I'm just gonna continue to add more reds and oranges into my yellows. You can use whatever colors you have on hand that you think are fall colors. You don't have to stick to the ones I'm showing you here. As a matter of fact, I encourage you to experiment. That's the best way to learn, is to try things out, see what works and see what doesn't work. So now I'm going into sort of a darker maroon red and putting that in just some key shadow areas, just building up that color. Start to look pretty good. Now I'm adding just a little bit of that green gold here and there, just, just to give it a little bit of green. I've pulled that yellow and that orange into the green background, so now I'm putting a little bit of green into the trees. Again, just to kind of keep it all unified. I'm gonna wet this meadow, the foreground of the meadow. And I'm gonna just take some ochre, some yellow ochre, or you can use raw sienna. And I'm just coming in there and making some sort of um, weed looking marks, you know, just hatch, just little lines and ticks, just to make some grass marks, to make it look like grass. I'm not wetting everything, just that top portion. And then as I come down to the dry area, those hatch marks, they look more defined and they look more like grass blades. So that's what I'm going for. So remember, you can use a little yellow ochre for this, raw sienna, burnt sienna, whatever you want to, something that looks brown, like the fall grasses are. They're kind of a golden brown. So think of that when you're choosing your color. And I just put those in so that it looks like there is some grass and vegetation growing up there. Now I've taken off my masking fluid off the trunks of my trees and I've got some burnt sienna and a little bit of um, lamp black that I've mixed together to make a dark tone. And I'm just gonna start coming down the back sides of these trees because that's where the shadow is. The sun is on the other side. So the shadow is coming down the back side of these trees. Now the sun will wrap around to a certain degree, so actually both sides of the trees can have a little highlight, both edges of the trunk. And the way light bounces all around trees and creeps down into the canopy and through little holes in the leaves and the little spaces, that's why it gives it such a nice little uh, shadow pattern onto the trunk. So you don't have to be perfect with this. Like I said, there's no wrong way to do this. This is just a little miniature sort of study to get you in the mood, get you in the creative mood, or for whenever you don't have time to do a whole large scale painting, you can do these little mini paintings. So now I'm just taking a really fine tip brush and I'm going in there and doing some limb work, you know, some shadow work on each of the limbs of the trees. I'm getting those shadows a little bit darker. Also going to just put some little limbs up there in the top of the canopy, kind of shooting out the top. Just give it a little more interest. 
you know, some of the leaves have already fallen off of this tree, so we've got a few naked branches, so we're going to put those in. Now you also can come back with your oranges and come back over the trunks in some areas of the branches. I haven't done that with this one, but you can. And that would be a good idea to just kind of paint over some of that trunk and some of those branches with a little bit of orange and cadmium yellow just, just to cover some of it up. You'll still be able to see through a little bit through, but it'll, it'll look nice. I haven't done that, but you can. It's a, just a suggestion. Now I'm going to add a shadow and I'm using that lamp black or a little Payne's gray. You can use Payne's gray if that's what you've got. It doesn't matter. Just get those shadows in. They don't have to be solid. Don't make them solid black lines. Let a little bit of the grass peek through that could be catching the sunlight. Now I'm going to come back in with my yellow ochre and actually that's my sienna, my raw sienna, sorry. And I'm just going to add some more of the brush down here, just some more brush marks, some more grass. We want it to look a little overgrown, like an overgrown meadow. So we'll get those in there. You can even add a little bit of the darker brown if you like, and just do some little fine lines. Make it look like brush and grass that's overgrown. I'm going to darken up this horizon line just a little bit with a little bit more of that pyrrole green. And go kind of up into the tree line. And we're almost finished with this little miniature beauty. A little more pyrrole green here and there just for some shadows just a very light touch and that is looking really really pretty I think we have it done it's finished so I hope you've enjoyed it and you have your beautiful little Monday miniature painting. So if you love art, then follow me for more tips and tutorials.